My name is Trevor Regan. I'm the presenter of this weekly broadcast on the YouTube. I invite you to join us on Sundays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from, for rich messages from the throne of God. Basically, we preach the mystery of Christ so that the sons of God all over the quarters of this earth may arise to new life in Christ Jesus. Be blessed. bless you and keep you as you tune in to this special recording. This is a series on Daniel's vision touching on the subject the resurrection from the dead. All these are messages that the Lord has directed me to record so that the brethren or sheep dispersed all over the world can catch a wind of what the Spirit is doing in the midst of the earth today. Praise God! In the first two recordings, we spoke about the standing up of the great Prince Michael and we also spoke about the opening of the seal books and in this particular message we will be looking at the appearing of the morning stars all these are locked up in the 12th chapter of Daniel praise God Daniel saw a vision of the time of the end he saw the great prince standing up, the great prince Michael standing up to fight on behalf of the people of God. And the Bible says that those who were sleeping in the dust arose from the dust. Praise God. And some went on to eternal life and some to everlasting shame and damnation. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. All these are spiritual allegories of the awakening of the sons of God as they return back to their lost glory in God. Bear it in mind, the only way you can truly know peace, joy and satisfaction to its fullness is rediscovering yourself back in that glory that the Father God predestined for you before this world was. No matter how low you are sunk, no matter how many entanglements you found yourself in this world, no matter how much pain, sorrow, distress, no matter how hopeless your situation may look, you still have a place in God. Praise God. And you can only rediscover this by awakening back to reality. That's what it means by awakening from the dust. Because all men slept in the dust in a state synonymous to death. Praise God. Dust to add dust to the tongue is a descent of, from, of, you know, of man from his original celestial state into that mortal state of the material man of the earth. And that material man of the earth is actually cut off from the goodies, from the life of God. Praise God. Not because God is punishing anybody, not because God you know, denies anybody access to his glory, but as long as a man walks in that mistaken identity, he cannot be a partaker of the spiritual realm of God. Praise God. So the Michael is an allegory of the Christ. See, the embodiment of Christ, the embodiment of the messengers, angels of God, announcing the gospel, the glad tidings, announcing the mystery of the age. 
to the sons of men who are lost in this age, calling them to come out of darkness and return back into the light. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. It's something very, very interesting. These things are happening right now. The hour comment and now is when those who are sleeping in their graves will hear the voice of the Son of Man and they shall awake and rise from the grave. Praise God. Jesus Christ made this statement. Understand, this is your moment for your awakening. This is your moment of glory. Arise and shine, for the light of God is risen upon you. Hallelujah. The glory of the Lord is come. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, these books, what we are hearing today, has been sealed and hidden from our comprehension for ages. That's why the angel told Daniel to seal up the words of the prophecy, what he had heard. Praise God, in reality, even Daniel did not understand what he was listening to. Praise God. But the time of the end has come. Praise God, when the time of the end comes, every man's eyes begin to be open. As it is written, many shall run to our flow and knowledge shall increase. Awareness shall increase. Awareness in this great truth. Awareness in the I am. Awareness in the glory of God, awareness of our participation in the very life, the flawless life of the Spirit. Praise God. It's very, very important. So these books are being unsealed right now. Praise God. It's interesting to note that Daniel, in the book of Daniel chapter 12 verse 8, sought to understand what the angel was telling him. Let's read this together. Daniel chapter 12 verse 8 And I heard but I understood not and then said I, O oh my Lord what shall be the end of these things? And he said Go thy way Daniel for the words are closed up and sealed Till the time of the end, many shall be purified and made white and tried, and the wicked shall do wickedly, and not that the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Praise God. So you could see Daniel sought to understand what he was receiving in this prophecy, but it was not given unto Daniel to understand. That's why Jesus Christ says, Blessed are your ears, for the ear, for the hear things that the ancients, faithful prophets of old, faithful men who sought the Lord, you know, they could not understand. Abraham could not understand what we are hearing right now. If Abraham understood, he wouldn't have been, you know, roaming around the earth looking for a child or for a land, a piece of territory upon the earth. Praise God. Moses never understood the words of the prophecy of this book. Even the very laws that Moses presented to the children of Israel, he himself did not understand. He could not see the mystery of the Christ in those laws. Praise God. Because those laws was actually speaking about Christ. It was actually speaking about a body. A celestial body, praise God, hallelujah. And so, someday we're going to look into the Ten Commandments, and you understand that the Ten Commandments is simply a fulfillment of the body of Christ, it's fulfilled in Christ, it cannot be fulfilled by man. Praise God. So, Jesus Christ says, We are hearing things that men sought to hear, angels sought to understand, but it was not given unto them. But today, by the special grace of God, we are hearing the greatest mystery of the ages. Praise God, which is the Christ in you. Every man who hears this voice, every man who can hear the voice of the archangel Michael should stand up right now in this hour and awaken back to his true state in God. Praise God, loosen yourself 
from the elements of this age. Loosen yourself from the bondages to you know a material world. Loosen yourself into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. These things are very important today. I just want to focus on the appearing of the stars. Praise God. As it is written in the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Praise God. I want us to understand that these stars or personalities in the firmament represent a people who have awoken to their true celestial state in God. See, it is beyond being morally good. It is beyond being religious as a man. It is beyond, you know, trying to walk, you know, in relation to the systems of men and the systems of religion. To be wise and to turn money unto righteousness has got to do with our, our awakening back into our true identities which already is the light of the world. We are the light of the world. Praise God. That light of the world is the inner man. Praise God. Which we call the Christ in us. Oh, hallelujah. So you can see the awakening is simply an awakening from the terrestrial, you know, ignorant state we have lived in as men back into a celestial, invisible, incorruptible state in God. And this is happening right now as we hear the voice of the trumpet. Praise God. Whatever you, you see in the Bible, particularly in the Psalms, praise God. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Sun, moon, stars, praise the Lord. It's actually speaking of the congregation of God. Praise God. He's speaking about the stars of God. Those seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. When you see the stars, you're actually seeing personalities in God seated. Hallelujah. Upon God's throne. Because heaven is God's throne. Praise God. Now, let us understand something very basic. Anything you see in this natural world is actually a manifestation of the invisible thoughts of God. Everything. You can just open your eyes and actually, you're, like you are seeing the, the invisible thoughts of God in the cinema being relayed before our eyes. Because everything in heaven and on earth, everything mentionable or non mentionable actually speaks and testifies of God. Everything. From the things underneath the sea, the things upon the sea, upon the earth, in the heavens, the invisible elements, the, the you know, everything testify of God's invisible kingdom. You see, but they appear to men as parables. Praise God. Particularly those who walk ignorant of this mystery. Those who are in outer darkness. Who walk in the flesh. According to the current mind, they are aware, unable to comprehend the fact that, you know, the physical things we see are actually pointers to God's invisible kingdom. Praise God. So when you see stars, there's a messenger. Praise God. When you see the glittering stars, twinkle, twinkle little stars, you are actually seeing yourself in God. You are seeing God's Elohim seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Christ is the body of God. Christ, hallelujah, is the manifestation of God in this, the invisible God in this natural dimension. So you are actually seeing yourself in God. Hallelujah. Seated far above all principalities and powers. 
That is what is happening. You are seeing yourself exalted far above death. Praise God. It is written that Jesus Christ, you know, was glorified. Praise God. Lifted up above all principalities and powers and is seated at the right hand of God. Praise God. And that is the destination of every man who awakens to his part in God. We are all seated in him. It never changed, but of course we lost this power and understanding due to the, due to the darkness and the corruption that, is, you know, that we discover in this age. But thank God right now, as we hear the voice of the archangel, divinity is being restored. The divine nature once more begins to be exposed. Hallelujah. So that men can now walk in true spirituality. Men can now walk, you know, as gods upon the earth. Men can walk in a new consciousness. Hallelujah. The purely spiritual consciousness. Praise God. Fused in one with that spiritual body we call the Lord's body. Praise God. It's a body of my life. People are seated in God, shining, glittering, hallelujah. The promise to the church, praise God, is that he that overcomes will I give the what? The morning star. He that overcomes will I give the morning star. You see this in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 28. Praise God, I will give the morning star. That is to him that overcomes. Praise God. That is the morning star is actually, when you look at a star, you are actually looking at a light beam. See, you cannot, these are light beams. You are talking of celestial light beams. Praise God. The morning star in reality is the star, is the sun. See, the sun itself is a star, but the sun is nearer to this earth than the other stars. In fact, scientists have proven that many of the stars out there are even bigger than the sun. Praise God. But we see the sun so big because it's nearer to this earth. And that morning star is the sun. Peter, in his letter, refers to it as the day star. Praise God. The day star in 2 Peter chapter 1. Praise God. Hallelujah. The day star. So the morning star, the day star, the stars of God, they are all synonymous. God is speaking about our true celestial state in God. In fact, Jesus Christ referred to himself as the morning star. Praise God. In the, in the book of Revelations, chapter 22, this is the last chapter. Let us really do a bit of reading here. So that we can get this subject properly. I'm going to start from Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The first and the last. Blessed are they that do these commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and enter in through the gates into the city. For without are the dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, we are seeing the very, very, these are heavy, heavy statements here. It says, first of all, I come quickly. See, the coming of the Lord is actually the unveiling of the morning star in man. Praise God, as man takes heed 
to the voice of the prophecy, the voice of the spirit, the voice of the archangel, as men hacking to it diligently. The morning star, which is the day star, appears. This is the Christ appearing in you. This is the coming. I come quickly. I can see this. I come quickly, quickly for those who keep the words of the prophecy of this book. For those who continue. Jesus Christ says, if you keep my words and continue in the doctrine, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free from the, you know, the corrupt man who is annihilated from God. The truth shall set you free back into the glorious liberty of the Son of God who is the, who is the morning star actually. So I come quickly, praise God, and you can see Jesus Christ testifies here that he is that morning star. I am the bright and morning star. I am the bright seed and you know day star. That bright day star and morning star. I am that star. Praise God. And you know, you can see that our reward is actually Christ. Our reward is awakening to the identity of Christ. Our reward is rediscovering our God state from the beginning. Praise God. Outside are the dogs, outside the gates. So this is the corrupt mind, the, the carnal man. See it. Those who are united to the flesh, who are married to the flesh, who continue in the lie of the flesh. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. So you can see, I am the bright and morning star. Hallelujah. And as we hack into the voice of the prophecy, we awaken, we rediscover that nature. See, the bondages are broken. We are loosened. Loosened from the earth and lifted up back into that, you know, dimension of timelessness. See it. Oh, hallelujah. Where there is no time and space, where we, we live in infiniteness in God. Oh, hallelujah. No more death, no more change. It's all available now. No more sorrow, no more pain. Everlasting joy. See, that same voice of God, you know, spoke through a, that whirlwind. Of course, God always speaks through the whirlwind. Whirlwind is also, that is the spirit. The spirit of God. He spoke through a whirlwind to Job when Job was in his distress. Praise God. And then all men today are in distress. Groaning in pain, in sorrow. Life in the flesh is distress. It's limitedness, it's pain, it's sorrow. That's life in the flesh when men walk guided by the carnal mind. So you can see Job in his travail represents the man of this age who is perishing, languishing in his sin and death, in the state of, you know, of sin, languishing in his corrupt nature. Praise God. And you can see God speaks to Job in Job chapter 38. Oh, hallelujah. Who is this that darkened words, you know, counsel by words without knowledge? Get up thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Where was thou? When I laid the foundations of the earth, declare if thou hast understanding. Who laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who has stretched the line upon it? What upon are the foundations thereof fasting? Or who laid the cornerstones thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So you can see God was trying to remind Job the same way he's bringing remembrance to every man today. Wherever you are, 
You could be in Africa, you could be in Asia, you could be in India, you could be in Pakistan, you could be in Argentina, you could be in Canada, in America, in London, wherever you are today. Hear the voice of the Father. Listen to the voice. Hallelujah. Speaking through, the, through that well with the Spirit. Listen to the voice. It's trying to remind you of your pure, immaculate, celestial state in God before you descended into mortality, before you descended into human living. Hallelujah. He's bringing awareness, remembrance. You just have to listen to this voice again and again and again and again. See it and be not conformed once more to this age, to the lies, to vanity. Be not conformed to the material age. Do not be, don't be carried away with the men of this age. But rather be conformed back to the image of Christ. Hallelujah. Let go of your life in this world and begin to remember that you are among those morning stars. Those sons of God, morning stars in God from the beginning. That is you. Hallelujah. The Bible says that by Christ all things are made. See, but in the sleep of state of deep sleep and death, man has forgotten that he was actually in God. He was actually in that body. That he was actually a part of God. Part of that body in God. Doing those works, creating the heavens and the earth. People think that there is somebody called Jesus in the sky and there are men here. If you look at the true original model, we are all one. There is no such thing as a Jesus somewhere and man somewhere. We are all one. There is nothing like God and man. God is all in all. See, the concept of man and God appears only as man's understanding became darkened. See, but in the awakening, as man comes back to life, God becomes all and all once more. Hallelujah. And in Christ, in God, we are the ones who generated the heavens and the earth. You are listening to great secrets hidden from the foundation of the world. Praise God. God is here to restore man, deliver the man, man from the grip of death. For a corrupt nature, men that are languishing, perishing. See, God has come once more. To give the knowledge of the Son of God, the knowledge of the morning star in you. To deliver you from the grip of death. To, to get you out of the morning clay where you are perishing. And cause you to reign as kings, sons of God once more. Praise God. These are the morning stars. Hallelujah. Declaring the mysteries of the ages. Hallelujah. Declaring the mystery of God's kingdom and singing his glory from generation to generation. These ones never die. If you go out and look at the stars, these are heavenly bodies that have been there from generation to generation. One generation comes, one generation goes, but these heavenly bodies remain there forever. They never die. They remain there shining in the, in, in, your, in the firmament. See, those of you who know literature, you remember the famous quotes of Julius Caesar, the great Roman Empire. See, when he boasted that I am as constant as the morning star. These are bodies that are constant in the heavens, never changing. You know, in the heavens forever, glittering, declaring knowledge, wisdom, declaring the mystery of the ages, declaring the mysteries of the kingdom of their fathers. Praise God, and God wants to bring every man back to that place 
That is your that is your peace, that is your joy, that is your security. Your joy or your security is not in making the millions of dollars. It's not in getting a husband or getting a wife or getting a fine family or acquiring goods upon the earth. That is not eternal life. That is that can never give you satisfaction. You can never see a man satisfied. You can never see a man that has come to the place where he is fulfilled as a man is impossible. Fulfillment comes in the knowledge of the Son. Hallelujah. Awakening to realize this divine nature in us and our part in God, our participation in the celestial body. Praise God. Jesus Christ says in that day, you will know that you are in me and I am in you. It never ever changed. You only changed in our minds. We became carnally minded. We are put on, we are, you know, being marked, imprinted with the mark of the beast. See, which is F bound. Hallelujah, but he has come to destroy the works of devil and to set his sons free. And whosoever the Lord maketh free is free indeed. Freedom to sour once more in your glory. Free from sin. Death is swallowed up in sin, in, in, uh, in, in victory. Hallelujah, as the sons of God are waking back to immortality and light within them. See, these are the light bodies. Praise God. Now let's quickly go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm going to round up with these verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Go to verse 40. Now this, this is a chapter dedicated to the resurrection. And um, of course, very much misinterpreted by men. Pray God, men always look out for physical signs. Never coming to the place where they understand that your reality, the things of God are all spiritual. If you are looking for a sign, a physical sign of people flying up in the sky, looking for a physical sign of you changing physically, you will never, never, never come to the place of perfection. Praise God. Because these things are discerned spiritually. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Now I'm going to quickly go to, to verse 40. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 40. Letter of Paul to the Corinthians. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another, another glory of the stars. For one star differs from you know, another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in natural body. It is raised in glory. It is shown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is stored in natural body, it is raised in spiritual body. See, there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Albeit that which was not first 
which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy, and the second man is the Lord from heaven. Now mark these words, they are very, very heavy words. As is the earth earthly, so such are they that are earthly, and as is the earth heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we are born the image of the earthy, we shall also let me turn this thing here. Bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit in corruption. But I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of our eye at this last trumpet, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption, corruptible, shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which given us the victory through our Lord Jesus. Praise God. Now let's stop here. I want us to, to get these words, very, very, very powerful words, meditate on these words here, because Paul is speaking about two bodies, a terrestrial body and a celestial body. See, it, a natural body and a spiritual body. See, it, an inglorious body and a glorious body, a weak body and a powerful body. Praise God. Now you can see that you know that which is celestial, that which is spiritual, that which is heavenly, that which is glorious, that which is powerful, is actually the spiritual body. See, these are the stars, these are the heavenly bodies, incorruptible in nature, immortal in nature. Praise God. And Paul speaks here about two men. The man of the earth, the man of the from heaven. See, and Paul is emphatic about the fact that the man from heaven is the Lord Himself. So that man from heaven, which we call the bright and the morning star, is Christ, is the Lord. Christ is the Lord. And Christ is actually our life. You see, see what? How can a man realize the life of Christ? Because Jesus says the works that I do, you will do also. Meaning that we are going to walk in that same identity he walked in. We are going to manifest the Father the same way he did. We are doing that now. We are working to this reality now. It's now, brethren, as we hear the voice of the trumpet. The trumpet is already sounding. Don't expect a future event. Don't offense, expect something to happen and you know, John, sons of God with, with Superman capes flying up and down announcing the gospel. If you wait for that, you wait forever. Listen to the voice of truth right now and I'll wake from the dead. Because the trumpet sound, a certain sound, a clear sound from the spirit goes forth to testify of the Christ in you is the voice of the Spirit testifying of the Christ in you bringing remembrance of things forgotten in man's descent into mortality Hallelujah! You that are asleep in the dust in the grave, awake! Your hour has come to awake 
Because the veil is being destroyed right now by the gospel truth that we are listening to in this hour. The veil is being ripped off our faces so that we can, every man can enter back into his glory. Put on Christ once more. Walk in the celestial, spiritual, immortal, incorruptible nature of Christ. That is what you are in reality. That's who you are in reality. The trumpet can only remind you and awaken you. It can testify of your part in this divine nature. See, that's why the Lord is furnishing us today with messages like this to bring about an awakening to our divine nature so that we can partake of the same once more. You don't need to cry. You don't need to perish. You don't need to be, to be sad, to be miserable. Because your moment has come to reign in life. Receive this message. Death is no more. Hallelujah. Listen to the voice of this trumpet. Listen to the voice of the great Prince Michael as he testifies of Christ in you. Awake from the dead. Walk in this divine identity now. Walk in this new nature now. Now is the time to walk in heavenly places. Now is the time to confess this Christ, the new, the new man, and deny the old. Praise God, this world is happening right now. Hallelujah. We have a nature that cannot be sick, that cannot perish, that cannot change. It is constant in the heavens. Praise God. Hallelujah. You don't have to look at the outer body because the outer body has already been crucified with Christ. You have to now begin to by faith walk by the inner man. Praise God. Be more conscious. Be more aware. Walk in the new man, in the Christ, in the inner man. Oh, hallelujah. Walk in the inner man. Hallelujah. You begin to discover those streams of living water. Busting forth with joy, peace, unchangeable, glorious, majestic, beautiful, hallelujah, bliss, it's all within you. Praise God. So you see those stars that Daniel sees shining in the firmament, speaking about you, awakening to your true nature in Christ, incorruptible, immortal, imperishable. See, it, as it is written in the book of in Timothy, Paul's letter to Timothy. It says he has brought to light immortality and life. You are that immortality. You are that life. It's all here. He has brought it to light. It has always been there. But the voice of the trumpet is revealing the Christ in you. It's unveiling the Christ in you. This is the apocalypse. Allow this prophecy. Allow these words. Gently guide you patiently into this new realization. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the next message, the next recording, we are going to be looking at the book of life. Praise God. And how the saints can actually purify themselves. Because Daniel says, those who are wise, shall purify themselves and become white. And how do we purify ourselves? And how do we find ourselves in the book of life? Because it is written that those who were found written in the book were those who were saved. Brethren, the Lord keep you in His love by His power. Amen. How was that? I hope you enjoyed that presentation. For more messages like this, you can always connect us on a weekly basis on Sundays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. You see, we have rich messages like this that go forth to edify the body of Christ and to cause them to grow in the realization of this great mystery of Christ that we preach. For more information, 
can always contact me on this email address or you can always get me on this phone number. We are also on Facebook. Just hook up, you know, with us on any of these, you know, address mediums and we will be with you in a hurry. You might be best in all your endeavors.